Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you will enjoy listening to. If you're interested in creating more balance in your life, understanding your five element energetic nature, finding the path of greatest ease, or releasing the baggage of this lifetime and discovering ancient alchemy that can help you fly in your life. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical transformational journey. Welcome back to the Inspired Action Podcast. My name is Jay and I'm here with our very, very, very special guest today, which happens to be my co-host, Lita Herman. (laughs) Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be here today. Well, Lita, you're always happy to be here, but why are you so happy to be here today? It's true. I am always happy to be here, but today's episode is all about the fire element. Yes, this is pod 13, lucky 13, and it's all about fire. And Lita is our special guest today because she is fire. And it's all about Lita, 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 Lita. It's all about Lita. (laughs) Yes, yes. Today is about the fire element. And you guessed it, I'm fire. We didn't guess it. I kind of told them. You told them. (laughs) But Jay, enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? (laughs) (laughs) That is very funny. If you don't recognize that quote, Oh, that's from the movie Beaches, which is a good study on the fire element because Bette Midler's character in the movie is fire. It's C.C. Bloom. You could watch that if you wanted to do a little extra credit homework if you really want to get a better uh, handle on fire. That character, Bette, oh, so Bette Midler is fire in real life and the character she plays in the movie is, you guessed it, fire as well. So today we're going to talk about, you know, some fire secrets and you'll learn some tips and suggestions on how to identify the fire element either in yourself or in those around you. So as we mentioned in the Wood podcast, we are only going to scratch the surface on these elemental energies. We and you know, a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. We <laughs> did in Wood and Wood was just a very I know, top of the, uh, tip of the iceberg there. So same thing with fire, but we're going to get you kind of interested, hopefully, and maybe you can start to identify it. But before we start to dive in to this podcast, it's number 13. Number 13. So Lita, if you want to talk a little bit about the number 13 in Chinese Yeah, this philosophy. is probably the last number and the best number we're going to talk about in terms of Chinese numerology. And the number 13 is a very important number, not because it's bad luck like we think in the West, but because it's the number of disillusionment. Ooh, disillusionment. <laughs> Can you explain that to everyone what that means? It's kind of like a strange word. It's kind of like it's mysterious. mysterious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, actually, it has to do with this podcast, Inspired Action. And in fact, if we were going to pick one number that represents what we're doing in this podcast, it would be the number 13. That's right. It's like the parting of the veil, taking the red pill in the Matrix movie, all those kind yeah, of things. all those things we talked about in the beginning. So disillusionment is seeing that everything in this life is an illusion and it's a Taoist concept. And it's one that's really difficult for us to grasp, you at know, least in the West. It's true. In the Matrix movie, you know, we talk about it so much in our first episode, not to ruin the storyline. If you haven't got to see that movie yet, it was part of your homework. It's okay. But cover your ears if you don't want to know what we're going to talk about. But, it, you know, the Matrix is this computerized kind of fake life that everyone is living while their bodies are being harvested for energy. I know that's really out there science fiction wise. Yeah. But if you strip that back to yeah. the concept, it's quite interesting. Yeah. So the Taoists believe our lives are like that, not the being harvested for energy part, but but the part where we're kind of living this almost like a movie of our lives. And we think we're living a very real life, but the reality is it's it's an illusion. And actually our spirits are having this illusory experience so that we can have an experience of something we're curious about. It, it's like before you're born, your spirit is supposed to have a curiosity and it, and it comes to experience and learn something. So that's why the Taoists call your lifetime, your curriculum. That's cool. All right. So that is number 13. So let's start to talk about, thank you, by the way, <laughs> and let's start to talk about fire, 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 fire. It's all about the heart to heart connection. Yeah. So I like that today's episode happens to be 13 because ultimately fire wants to have these totally real and authentic 
authentic heart to heart connections with people. And that's really the goal. But the reality is most of their lives, they actually hide their own hearts from everyone for fear of getting hurt. So I was thinking in a sense, if they can accept that life is an illusion anyway, so much of their heart pains would vanish. (laughs) Okay, so that's it. You just solved every fire person's challenge in life. So I guess we could just end the podcast right here. It's done. It's over. Mic drop. Boom. Fire (laughs) people. You're all you're all healed. They're all ready to go. I love it. Mic (laughs) drop. But you forget that all the other people who really don't understand fire still need this episode. Okay. 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 You're right. You're right. So let's give this a general overview of fire, even though you just pretty much solved solved their problems, you solved all their challenges, but we're going to back it up now. Now we'll go backwards and we'll, all right, so let's start with an overview. All right. So let, I always like to take it back to the seasons. Fire is associated with the season of summer. And so remember, if you've listened to episode 12, wood is associated with the season of spring, which means it's about new growth and very fast growth. I mean, plants really shoot up in the spring like a direct shot to the sky. And then as summer comes along, the plant begins to mature and spread out. And during midsummer, their growth slows down. And then what happens? The beautiful flowers come and this blooming happens and all the beauty of their life comes out at that point. So fire is about being mature and letting all your beauty be be seen by the world. And we're actually recording this during summer. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. apropos as well. <laughs> but you know, you often talk about their shyness and their vulnerability. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's this conundrum, this puzzle, because if you're fire, you want the world to see your beauty, but the world is a mean place. And so you don't want to get hurt. So you're constantly constantly opening your little flower petals and peeking out and seeing if anyone wants to look at you and then closing them again for fear of getting hurt from all those mean people. But you know, everyone loves fire people. That's how you can tell someone is fire. They're usually have a lot of energy. They're upbeat. They have a lot of uh, friends and acquaintances. Everyone loves them. And they're beautiful, right? And they're always beautiful. But they don't always know that. So it's true. But when fire gets really, really hurt, they can be mean too. And then the world seems to to turn on them and it's really not pretty. Well, um, in that you know, case. I do. I have seen fire people go Meow, really kind of mean and they can be the meanest of the elements when they're not in a good place. But OK, so that's a little bit of how fire struggles. Let's talk about the positives. Yes. So for fire, you have to imagine a person who's completely focused on people. Like if they walk into a room full of people, they won't notice anything about the room's decor. They'll be completely focused on scanning every face in the room to see if they know anyone, to see if there's someone they want to talk to, to see if there's anything like exciting for them. So it's like they're just completely ignorant about it. So they're just else. looking where they're going to make their hot connection and yeah. they just don't even notice anything around the surroundings. No. And, they, you know, we're so clued into people that we're, we're just checking them out. And the only exception is sometimes if there's someone you want to talk to and it's like the hostess or something, you might look at their outfit and like compliment them on some shirt they're wearing or jewelry or some attire because you're trying to make a connection. And it's a pretty good chance that the hostess is fire as well. Yeah, right. So there they you go. They love to throw parties. You're gonna, that's right. So the party, the hostess, they're probably a fire person and they're the greeter and they're like, so there you go, the fire and the fire together, they'll banter back and forth. So they might throw out a, a little, a little, you know. Yeah, you'll notice the outfit. Compliment. If you're, if you're talking to someone and you want to you know, begin to make a connection. So let's go keep going more. Let's tell some more little tidbits about fire. Okay. So other good things, and not everyone knows this, but fire people are designed for love. And it's not just etheric love, but that connection, it's can be sexual. So it's a hot sexual love. They smolder with sexuality. And you'll notice this because they often dress to entice those around them into thinking about sex. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to be completely out Outrageous, but you know they are they're trying to look really nice and they're trying to so maybe they're pushing the envelope a little bit on sexiness yeah like masters of seduction yeah they're the masters of seduction and who seduction and are irresistible to those who interact with them is that what you're saying yes. they're kind of like irresistible they or at least they want to be, to be yeah that would be wonderful so fires think about sex in every conversation and often they turn the topic to slightly naughty innuendos so they're not really dirty minded they don't get really nasty 
nasty, but they love. I'm sure they could if they, they wanted could, to. But they love a risque conversation just to make everyone laugh nervously. And they just love a conversation with a sexual edge. And what else is there really to talk about but love, sex, and even better, falling in love and then having sex. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I mean, love makes the world go around and fires are the agents of love. So fires are flirtatious. We know that, and, you know, unless they can rein themselves in or shut their bright light off in a box, people are always going to be attracted to them. Is that correct? Yeah. And it does sometimes cause trouble with monogamous relationships because fires so easily attract people to them. You know, they might get interested in someone else. And so their relationship has to be really solid if they're not going to like look around, look elsewhere. Yeah. And I think the partner of a fire person has to understand that that's their nature, that yeah. it's a, a flirtatious nature that doesn't really mean that they're going to do something, you know, less than positive of what you want yeah. in that relationship. But Well, in terms of cheating on someone, but let, but I have this theory. It's not really about the, the actual, like having sex with someone else or cheating or whatever. It's just about the feeling they have when they're really connecting with people and flirting yeah. and it's like they live for that excitement of having that heart connection. So however that plays out, whether it's flirting or just having a serious conversation, that that they actually feel in their bodies more alive. When sure. That's and they like it when other people like them. That's their driving force. Yeah, they yeah. that's really what they want is for people to like them. So, you know, what better way to do that than maybe flirt a little bit or something like that. So and and so as far as a fire go, the worst case is when they get rejected yeah. or insulted or yeah. uh, criticized. Yeah. But not like wood criticizing, a yeah. different, more superficial criticizing. Well, how can I say it? I mean, mean people suck. Yeah. You know, and I'm pretty sure that the person <laughs> who created that bumper sticker, mean people suck, was a fire oh, person. Oh, absolutely. Yes. They just were like, uh, mean people suck and I'm going <laughs> to tell the world I'm these mean people and I'm going to make a bumper sticker and put it If the, world, the world didn't have mean people, then all the fires would just be joyful and happy. And Yeah. And the <laughs> world would be a so much better place and much more fun. We'd have parties every day. Right. That's right. all we do is go to parties. And and here's the thing, if you, if a fire person doesn't feel safe, they can't open their heart. Okay. So, you know, you want to, you want to fight, you know, other people want fire people to open their hearts. They're so lovely when they do that. And so, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to be fire because of the mean people in the world. You know, so if they get out, you know, they say they get hurt and then they bounce back. That's like, yeah. you know, they just keep going again. So then they just revert back to their wonderful, yeah. sexy, flirtatious, That's right. happy and, ways. And oddly, they bounce back really quick, you know, like, because they're used to this. This, you know, there's just a lot of, you know, mean people in the world. So they're used to it. They don't like it. They hate it. But, you know, the next time that they feel safe, they'll open their heart again. Sure. So, so let's talk about some fire people who are out and about in the world as we know right now. How about some examples? Yeah. Well, we already talked about Bette Midler. She's big fire. Yeah, she's big fire. Um, some other people are like Amy Adams, Anne Hathaway, Drew Barrymore, uh, some musicians, Justin Bieber, Usher, Elton John. There's a lot of musicians. Adam Levine of Maroon 5. Oh, my favorite. Freddie Mercury of Queen. He just had such a, a big open heart. And Janis Joplin as well. Sure. Um, let's see. Shirley MacLaine, Annette Benning, Oh, Lily Tomlin. Yes, is my yes, yes. And you have to check out, if you have Netflix, Frankie and Grace is this um, amazing show where they really show us the firewood relationship. So you'll have to guess which one's fire and which okay. one's well, wood. Well, you just kind of told them that Lily Tomlin <laughs> yeah, right. was fire. There you go. Okay, so but go watch that it show. Is a good, it is a good dynamic to watch of the wood fire relationship. It's just so perfect. They did a fantastic job. Now, all those people that you just mentioned, you know, they're very likable people. Yes. Who does not like Amy Adams? Who does right. not like Drew Barrymore? You know, Justin Bieber, well, he's his own, probably his, his worst <laughs> enemy there when he gets hurt. Hurt. All these, yeah, you know, when you can, can see these people, how yeah. uh, how vulnerable they are. I mean, yep. Janis Joplin, I mean, she poured her she heart poured and soul her. and oh. all those songs are about heartache and love yes. and love gone bad. Yes. And so, yeah. So you can kind of see how this works. So they're like, again, I said they're all very charismatic, but they're yeah. kind of like vulnerable. And then there's Bill Clinton. Talk about charisma. Yes. Boy, it got him in trouble, yes. didn't it? Yes, he's but, very charismatic. But the country fell in love with him for a while there. Yeah. I mean, he was... Yeah. He was very dynamic. Oh, totally. Yeah. He still is in his yeah. own way, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, fire's power persuasion is very 
charismatic. It, it's just this amazing thing. And it's also useful in business and politics. Sure. Let's yep. talk a little bit about how um, we always joke about fire are really good salespeople. Yeah. But like, that doesn't mean necessarily good business people. Right. But good sales. They're people. not great business people, but they understand what people desire. And they more than any other element can convince people of something like, look at this fantastic thing. You have to get it. It's amazing. So it's their enthusiasm is yeah. compelling. It's contagious. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we say, if you want to start a business, get a few fire people excited and they'll get 50 more people excited. Yeah, that's a secret marketing <laughs> tip for yeah, sure. But no, it's true. It's their enthusiasm is contagious and it's fun. And you're like, well, I want to know what that's about. And I want to love that car as much as they love that car or whatever they're yeah. selling. Yeah. And um, the only problem is in business, if you have a, fi- a people pleaser, they also kind of give things away yeah. because they want to be liked. Sure. As soon as you drop the bomb on how much it costs, it might not be so likable. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, then you've handed it off to a wood person and they'll close the deal. Yeah. So let's tell them about our, our perfect um, car uh, sales sure. strategy. Sure. Go ahead. So you put the fire person out on the car lot. And they're the ones who are like, oh, check out this beautiful car. Get sitting in it. The Isn't color it matches your eyes. Yes, color matches oh, my God. You're going to look so sexy in this car. <laughs> and then once the person is. You know, someone like, tells you you look sexy in a car, you're going to buy that car. Yeah. OK, absolutely. you're going to. How can you not buy that car? No, I want the ugly one over there that I look like an old footy duddy or whatever. in it. sorry, old footy duddy people. <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Or you could be sexy and old footy duddy. I'm not saying that. But this car is the sexy car. Right. So then they give them all everything they want. And then they're like, OK, now we now, have to hand so it over to the manager. Our strategy is the manager in the back would be a wood person who are the best negotiators. They can negotiate what seems to be a win. So how much do you want to pay for that sexy car? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) So yeah, so that's the firewood dynamic. It's very good in sales. Um, And it's kind of funny to think about it. And I'm sure we could do all the other elements. And as we do them, we might just put them in where they belong. Yes. And fire, we also have to think about great communicators, writers, teachers, storytellers. They love to talk. And so usually they choose a vocation that involves doing a lot of communicating, whether it's spoken or written. So why do fires piss people off so easily? <laughs> they sound like they're the most, you know, enjoyable know, people to be around ever. Rosy, it always confuses me. Yeah. If they're so good at communicating, why do they piss people off? And well, they do, by the way, all the time. Did you hear my heavy sigh? <laughs> yes. So we, we, we hate to disappoint people. So sometimes we're we're a little self-centered, just like everyone else. We all want what we want. And but when we want something, we don't want to let you down or be a beep beep. Itch, an itch with a bee. <laughs> so we can be the queens of passive yeah. aggressive. Is there higher what's higher than the queen? The Empress. <laughs> yeah, the Empress of, of passive, passive aggressive. aggressive. <laughs> yes. They can be very passive, which is a manipulative thing, which yes. is also one of the down ugly sides of fire. More yes. ugly sides of fire. Not that there are not all beautiful. Sorry, yes. fire people. You're all beautiful. <laughs> every last part of you. But sometimes the passive aggressive or the meanness or the itchy with a V can definitely come out. <laughs> and I, it can be really infuriating for other people. Sure. I would say as a wood person, I could honestly say that I could honestly say that that is the most annoying thing about fires to me, because I like to be frank. I like to say it like it is. I like to be like, what's what, what are you talking about here? Passive aggressiveness is infuriating to, I would say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say wood people in general. Yes, wood people hate it because of the your desire to be clear in yes. communication and passive aggressive is sneaky. It is a little sneaky. And so we don't do the, sneaky. That's the downside of being fire. We are notoriously passive aggressive. But it's not all the time. Not all the time. No. no. And some of us can only speak our wants with that passive aggressive overtone because we are so afraid to assert what we want overt, overtly. And wood is assertive by nature. Yeah. So that's why it's so. Yeah. And you know, the people pleaser is not always easy to be a people pleaser. Yeah. And the other thing, since we're kind of going down a little of the bumps here, they're not good listeners. Did yeah, you hear fires. that, Lita? <laughs> uh, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, they're not good le- <laughs> listeners. Um, they, they want to be, but they just are well, it's all I, about them. I like to say that they have a very high emotional intelligence. And so they're listening, but not to your words. They're listening to your heart. Their, your feelings. Your yes, feelings. Okay. You're your not going to win an argument with that. So I might not 
remember <laughs> anything you just said, but I know that Jay was happy at that moment. She had a smile on her face. Her eyes were bright and I could feel the emotion of what she was saying that she's, you know, in a good place. But can but I repeat what she said? No. Maybe not. <laughs> so some people might look at, you know, um, that they're so self-absorbed that they're not really listening, but they are listening. They're actually listening, like she said, on a higher emotional intelligent level. Yeah. So I, I like to to not focus on the fact that they're bad listeners. They just listen in a different way. <laughs> well, I mean, you'd think the strong communicator would be a great listener, but mm, yeah, that's the, that's the weird thing. How and I also think that fires are so far, they want to think what's next before. So they're not listening. They just want to get right to what they have to say. So they might lose track of where they're going, especially oh. if it's an emotional conversation. Absolutely. I'm so self-centered in this weird way that I'm ahead of the conversation. And that's another reason I'm not listening. It's yeah. I'm trying to decide where, and you know, going. wood and water all can have that ahead conversation thing, but this is like an emotional. And if anything yes. gets heated, like a heated conversation, whether it's emotional or happy, or I mean, that could really you could start to see the fire person really struggle there. And they may, you know, fires may even ask leading questions that evoke emotions from another person because they're always working to find a way for you to let down your guard and explore the emotions sure. deeper. And so some people might be slightly uncomfortable with fires disarming questions. Yeah, I, I think so. But you know, once you can open your heart and connect with the fires, they'll be open hearted with you all day long. You know, yeah. since it's about making a connection, it's hard for them to talk about things that they're not interested in. I mean, how can you have an open hearted discussion if you aren't talking about something you're both passionate about? Yeah. And it's so funny when two fires find a topic they're both excited about, they start talking over each other and they're jumping in and interrupting each other's sentences back and forth and the excitement builds. And we we kind of do that a little bit. Yeah. You know, I have fire seconds, so we connect definitely on this <laughs> fire thing and we're always excited and we talk and it's, but I've seen you with father fire people and it's just very, very funny to watch because it's like, it goes up, 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 up and down, yeah. down, down, it's, up and down, up and down. It's kind of like our crazy podcast. Yes. So. Woo. <laughs> but yeah, people are surprised how much we talk over each other, even in the podcast, but you're, you're fire too, Fire Jay, second. second. I have it and it's very strong and yeah. I love it. It makes me very happy um, and especially when I'm engaging with another fire person it is yeah. that banter that it back is, and forth banter yes. and now one thing is we don't do it so much in this podcast because you're wood, wood first Jay but you may see it more with two fires than I like to call it playing a verbal game of strip poke of yes strip that poker. concept always makes me laugh but let's talk about it I've heard it a few times but it's hysterical so let's kind of go with what that means and let's tell them how, how it so plays out get two fires together the first person Person will tease or playfully taunt the other person about some aspect of themselves. So the second person then laughs nervously, playing along and admits that it's true. Would it be like, ooh, that dress is a little low. You're yeah. going to have fun tonight. Yeah, and then they're like a little nervous right? and then they go back and forth. Okay. Yeah, because you called them out on it. And, they and it's true. It. And it's true. Oh, yeah. They'll be like, oh, yeah, it is. And then they come back with an equally. Well, like your skirt's a little short there. Yeah. Those heels are a little high. You're going to be wild. <laughs> tonight too okay so, but it's fun and yeah. they're going okay so i see like that a little tease and they disarm each other and they go back and forth and i've seen it firsthand it's it's very funny and it's it's all in good fun but wood for example hates teasing they yeah. can't play and that they game. go the laughter goes yeah. up if you find that if the fires are connecting and they're having fun they will laugh and laugh and laugh yes. and hysterically laugh yeah. and it's very you're like wow they are like what are they having what are they drinking it just looks like playful banter but it's actually a very serious game of making each other vulnerable and that's the point of it yeah so the hidden question behind the conversation could be will you be true and show me your inf imperfections will you be authentic can you laugh at yourself and help me laugh at myself. And that's kind of what the vulnerability does. It helps connect. So let's talk about if you're in a romantic relationship with a fire person. Yeah. So when both partners can be open to each other without being mean spirited, they feel safe. And they no longer need to hide the imperfections and then they can be authentic. So they have to really understand the things that we've talked about, about the dynamics of what makes fire happy. And, you know, the flirting, you have to be with someone who understands that you're going to flirt. You might flirt with the cashier. You might flirt with the, you know, the plumber. You might flirt with, but it's not a flirt, like a sexy flirt. So you have to have a partner who understands that. Yeah. And um, going back to imperfections, like I, I imagine the other elements don't really understand what we're talking about. 
I always say a wood person loves when you say you're you're doing so great. You're amazing. A fire person wants to hear even though you messed up, you are so wonderful. And you're beautiful. And beautiful. And sexy. Yeah. yeah. It's sexy. So compliments. So, even though you have imperfections, I still love you. That's what they want to yeah, hear. Yeah, so that's it's, important. It's like they know they're not perfect. They think, oh, my nose is crooked or my hair is not right. I mean, they're very self-critical. But if the person they're with acknowledges that they still love them, sure. they still think they're beautiful, then they can open up and be authentic. Okay, that sounds great. No, and then, then, then there's the issue of fires avoiding people who are mad or angry with them. I mean, sometimes they're really overly sensitive and they misperceive anger everywhere. Like people who aren't even angry, they, they're like, oh, you were so mad. And they're like, what? I wasn't mad at you at all. And they're like, what? And then they start the disarming thing and then they find out it was nothing. Yeah. And so they may even withhold the truth or lie to avoid pro- provoking another person's anger. And so then they're very inauthentic and it just and it goes back to that sneaky mess. thing yeah, again. Sneaky. Yeah. Thing. And so, you know, if they're in a good relationship that's very mature, you know, they're not going to be secretive like that. But if they're not feeling safe, then well, that's what do they happen. always try to be the people pleaser no oh, matter what? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they want everyone I, to feel good. I do and, think they can mature out of that for the most part. Sure. But sure. they have to work hard at it. And, you know, I always think fire has this nervousness about them. So let's <laughs> talk about that. Yes. They, you know, if there's a lull in the conversation, they get totally nervous and they start talking nonstop to fill in the gaps in the conversation with like chatter, you know, and they, they just, they get, they're like, oh, does this person like me? Why aren't they talking? And they just go yes, down I, always, I have this little test. If you're not sure if someone's fire, you have to have a poker face and not say much. And it drives them nuts. You can kind of see them to un, the starting to unravel. They don't know what you're thinking. You know, when they want to ask you a question, if it's something, something simple as like, do you want something in your coffee? Just wait a few seconds. Don't respond. Do your best poker face and they will unravel. Yeah. They'll be like, do you want sugar? Do you want milk? Maybe two sugars. Um, um more. Uh, well, do you like it black then? Um, you you know what? I can just bring everything and then you can decide if you want sugar or not. And I haven't even said a word. So you just sit there quiet and you're like, <laughs> no, I'll have tea instead. <laughs> but no, it's this whole disarming of they just kind of like they, they are not, you're not playing their game. Yeah. You're not talking to them. They don't know if you like it. They don't know if you're mad. They don't know anything. Well, what, remember they're trying to read your emotions. Yes. And if you're not showing emotions, you show they're that poker face. freaking yeah. out. So that is definitely a secret of yeah. fire. So if you want to have fun so with have, a fire, don't be quiet. Too much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not too much fun for them. All right, so let's talk about their vanity. Is it really always about them all the time? Well, CC Bloom was right. You know, like if you, you know, tell me what you think about me. Yes. Um, so, yeah, they've been accused of only thinking about themselves. And, you know, is it vain? Is it narcissism? Is it just fire? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I think that that's one of the challenges of fire is to know how to have that in balance. Yeah. If you can have that in balance, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And so I, I feel like, you know, fire people are often beautiful. They're charismatic and they're actually quite smart. Very smart. They're, they're probably people. one of the, the smartest elements they're, for sure. They're definitely book smart. Yeah. And so they have a lot to be vain about. So, yeah. But you know what? It really comes down to their they aren't sure that they're beautiful. They aren't sure that they're smart enough. You know, they, they have insecurities. insecurities. And so the vanity is more like, can you please tell me that I'm, you know, smart and beautiful? Yeah. Well, you know, I think we're so wrapped up in a lot of things in the society that we put a lot of pressure on people as far as beauty goes, yeah. you know, body image and yeah. clothes and hair and makeup. And so fire, that can be intimidating. Yeah. Fire is the most susceptible to that. Yeah, pressure. totally. The body pressure and the body image pressure. But on the flip side, we're innately optimistic. And when life is about love and joy, why do people insist on being so serious, mean and not fun? Yeah. Fire people are very comfortable when it's not so serious and it's not mean and just exactly what you just said lots of fun that's yeah. their that's their element it's yeah. the you know it's how they like to do it and, the, and in the way that wood refuses to follow rules and thinks outside the box all the time, fire finds the silver lining in every cloud. And then they sprinkle happy thoughts all over Aww, it. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Silver linings. That's a very good thing for fire because they're always trying to see the good. Yes. And, and even though we can see the problems and the challenges as well, we always return back to positivity. It, and so we, we joke about like, 
it's not a joke when someone dies, but when a fire person talks about a close person that died, they laugh. In the they talk about the happy emotion, like their emotions are half emotions are happier. Yeah. It's like, oh, that that, you know, good old chap. I loved him. Ha ha ha. You know, and it's just like yeah. they return to the lightness and the joy. Actually, I have been to funerals with fire people and they're, you know, they remember good things. They're bubbly. They're happy. And they bring other people up. Yeah. In and, that situation. and they'll cry, too. But it, yeah. it's it's like they, as much as they cry, they laugh. So if they're sad for a moment, it's a little bit like they're or manic depressive or something, you know, up, well, down, up, down. Or bipolar bear. Yeah, bipolar bear. <laughs> That's what I like to say. But no, I'm not saying fire is bipolar bear. Um, I'm just saying that they can be up and down, like Lita said. So you maybe you have to figure them out. You have to understand. How could a fire person be laughing at a funeral? That would drive a metal person insane. Oh my God, metal would take that so seriously. It's yeah. impossible to laugh at yeah. a funeral. But you know what? It's probably a good place, actually, if you think about it, because it is, you want to remember the joy, the happiness, the love, the emotion that that person who has passed carried on. And that's what a fire person, I always love to be hang out with the fire person at a funeral or a wake. Right. Not that I like to go to those, no. but <laughs> if I have to, you want to go with the fire person. So, so let's talk about fire and friends. Friends. Fire, gotta have friends. Fire's who are never, fire. short, never short on friends. Some fires believe they only have a small circle of friends. Ha, that's funny. <laughs> Most of them have many, many friends. It's, it's like they might have one best friend and 50 other other friends. You know, are those close acquaintances? Are those friendly acquaintances? It all depends on the person, but they're very social and they, they have a social the kind of Rolodex. they who say, my best friend, blah, 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 blah. And then in, 10 minutes later, they'll talk about a different best friend. It's like, how can you have yeah. so many best friends? Well, you can if you fire. <laughs> so occasionally, I just want to say there is one exception. There's a certain kind of fire that really does only have a couple best friends. But for the most part, all the other fires are, are, have just tons and tons of friends. So it's good. And, and, you know, it is a fun thing to have fire people in your life. You know, one of the things they love to do is they love to laugh. They love humor. They love to share laughter with other people. Yeah. And so the reason they have so many friends is that it's very endearing. People want to be around people who laugh all the time. And Chinese philosophers believe the path of fire is to learn how to live open hearted and unprotected all the time. I think that's another big, big thing with fire. Can you just say that again? Well, it's it's about the best protection is no protection and heart people want to protect their hearts. We call it the heart protector. But what they need to learn in as a lesson or curriculum for this lifetime is how to live open hearted and unprotected all the time. Yeah. So this means if someone's mean, fire needs to see that it's the other person's pain and problem and not theirs. Yes. Not think, oh, what did I do wrong? So but that's the mature of the fire. That's yeah. When they finally mature, they get this. Yeah. And some fires never get there, but some do. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful it, thing. It really changes the way they live their lives. That's great. So, all right. So how do we spout, spot a fire out in the world here? Okay. So let's talk about the fire walk. So it's almost like there's helium in their shoulders trying to lift them off the ground. And they literally bounce when they I walk. think champagne bottle. Oh, when yeah. When you pull the cork. Pop, yeah. Pop the top of, off a of, uh, champagne bottle. They bounce up and down. And their heels come off the ground and propel them up and down. And so they appear almost to be walking on their toes. And so this upward movement is really noticeable. And you'll see it in their faces, too. They actually lift their eyebrows when they speak. Yeah, that's a big telltale. And, of course, they have that sexy, friendly smile that's always there. And the smile is like always like they can be telling you the worst news on the planet and they still have a smile. Still smiling. I mean, that and it's not and it's sometimes it makes the other person uncomfortable. Yeah. Because they're telling like, you know, this horrific story and then they have this smile and the other person doesn't know mm -hmm. what to do. Yep. So, yeah. And unlike woods who have a goal oriented walk, we talked about that last time, they pick a point and they walk. They find the fastest way to get there, but fires are easily distracted and they go, they, they don't get to their destination. Yeah. I like way. to say that fires can be a little shiny. Yeah. So shiny. they see a shiny object. They go to the right. They see a shiny, but it's from a joy from perspective. It's from a open hearted perspective. Like, oh, look, a flower. Oh, look at that pretty this. Oh, look. So just, yeah, they're distracted. <laughs> it's, but it's a nice thing. It's not like, you know, it's not like an intelligence thing. It's more of an open hearted joy looking for beauty. 
trying uh, to make it over to Heart of Connection. How many times have I gone to the grocery store for eggs and left with 50 things and yes. no eggs? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> they kind of forget where they, that's the shopping faux pas yeah, of what they're actually the there for. I it's see okay. all these shiny things. So the talk, so their voice is very important. It, it we, we like to call it, it's a tiny bubbles voice. So not only do they bounce on their walk, but their voices bounce. They, it, it's Back to the like champagne up bubbles. And down, yeah. Up and down, up and down. And there's the champagne bubbles and the voice is happy, upbeat, excited. It, it actually goes up and down. And that's how people get excited too, because that's exciting. Yeah. It, 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 it pulls you in. Excitement yeah. in someone else. And, um, but how's that different from like the water? Water can have some sudden drama of like ups and downs, but they're mostly monotone the rest of we'll the time. We'll talk about that more yeah, on water. So we'll talk when we get, we get that to water. But if you hear a couple dramatic up and downs, you have to really see that it's consistent. Yeah. Because water will do that a little bit and then they'll go back down to a flat voice. So fire goes up and down all the time. There's sharp peaks and valleys and it's not a sing-songy voice, which is an earth voice. Which We're is talk earth. About that we'll do well. that next, actually. Earth is yeah. next. So fire, you know, it has that voice that just evokes excitement it kind of reaches out and it kind of wants to pull you in and you 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 have the high tones you can hear the sounds are a little thrilling even if they're talking about something boring they can have they're the best storytellers because they can if they see that they're losing your interest they'll somehow use raise their voice and pull you back in yeah i mean how many times have we heard a story and it just bores us to tears it's the telling of yes. it it's the teller yes yes, yes. who's not exciting you about the story and whereas a fire person can tell the most boring story yeah. and make it sound exciting. And then they have this sexy smoldering voice of fire. So that's the voice that is, you know, enticing. Yes. And, and they're, they're like trying to be, pull people in. Yeah. And that's a special, you know, way that they can make it sound throaty and kind of. Why don't you do a little bit of that for us? Kind of a little bit like, you know, come over here. I've got something for you that really teasing they're not serious but the voice says hey there's more yeah okay <laughs> Woo. Um, okay so let's talk about the eyes the yeah. eyes the so eyes twinkle twinkle little fire star yes so the eyes are shiny and bright and they actually twinkle i think it's the biggest giveaway for fire is yeah. they have this twinkle in their eyes yes and they can't help it that the bright light shines from their eyes it's like they're seeing t you it's, it's, you see twinkling little stars peeking out of their eyes yeah and they, you can see it from quite a distance yeah sometimes. and they also have flirty eyes yeah i mean well that's that's obvious because of the flirtationness but if you look at their eyes they look away they're kind of coy they they're like pretending to be shy and so it's this little bit like do you like me i peek at you and then i look away do you like me you know so they're they're it's a little game a little flirtation game so i do you think that they communicate with their eyes yes that in and especially in love relationships it's all about the eyes and yeah. they, they want to see inside you they need to see your eyes while you know while they're talking to you or even making love. It's really important that that connection through the so, eyes. Is uh, so with that said, what does fire really want? So they want to know that you can give them unconditional love. They want to know that you love them no matter, no matter what. what. Yeah. Yep. It's that okay. simple. They want to know they have more good features than bad. So they don't want to cover up the bad. They just want to yeah. celebrate the good. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. really good. So the evolution of fire, you know, what is the, the evolutionary path for a fire person? It lies in realizing that your best lover and your best friend is truly yourself. Yeah. So they have to love themselves. You know, what's yeah. that saying? You have to love yourself before other people can love you. Well, that's really true for a fire person. Yeah. And you know what? They may think that someone loves them passionately and it's the best relationship ever. But we know sometimes those relationships wane and then the fire person's empty, left empty because they they thought it was the other person they needed to get love from when it's themselves. Themselves, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully their love life, you know, they find someone where it lasts a, lasts a lifetime. But if they know that really the love is inside them, then they won't feel empty. Are they always afraid of losing that love, like from that person or is it from themselves that they're afraid? Once they understand that they have to love themselves. If they love themselves, they don't need to be afraid yeah. of losing love. That's great. So, you know, I always say once you fall in love with yourself, you can embark on your true destiny, which is to share your love and your light with everyone else. That's the fire thing. That's from my perspective, that's the fire yes, thing right there. That's it. 
So that's a great place to leave end on this show for fire. And we're going to leave you with that wonderful thought. So fall in love with your fire self. Love all the good. Forget about the bad. Who cares? Life's yeah. too short. You have to love your own imperfections. Yes. As, you know, as much as your perfection. And, you know, it's okay to be shy and vulnerable because that's when all the good things happen. Yeah. Open uh-huh. your heart and all will be well. And shine, little fire person, shine. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast. You can follow our Inspired Actions on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and really appreciate your input. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to hug the dog.